morning everybody welcome to our SSC CGL refresher session for the English comprehension language and this would be our second session okay shall we get started let me project the PPT okay so the first one um, it's a one-word substitution uh, you know as always uh, one-word substitutions the trick is there's no trick you either know it or you don't know it right because um, there are some words see the best part about SCCGL is uh, some of the words are uh, some of the words get repeated some of the phrases are repeated so even if you like uh, what do I say go through 150 question papers right you'll at least get three or four of the same words in the paper uh, so that way uh, you know we can bag some marks in one word substitutions but it's 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 great one word, I, I I feel one word substitutions is, is another key way to expand your vocabulary right for you to just understand what the word means so um, unfortunately you know you either what, what can I say uh, learn it um, as a standalone thing like I said like either you know it or you don't know it because uh, it's very tricky to apply a, a root word concept or even common prefixes and suffixes. To an extent, you can, right? Uh, let's look at our options for the first one. At least the there's a there's a common prefix in most of the options. The first one is someone able to use both hands with equal skill. Ambi, ambi, uh, ambivalent, amphibious, ambiguous, and ambidextrous. Right? Uh, these are my options. Now, does anybody know what ambi? ambi as a as a prefix like it's a prefix right it's a common prefix what does it mean ambi itself uh, you know the prefix is like a it's it's from a latin origin and it means both okay so very difficult right so we're looking at we're looking at at least three words which has uh, you know uh, ambi as a as a prefix so which means amphibious uh, we might be familiar with right and and likewise ambiguous also is one of the common words in terms of our synonym antonym context right so we probably know the meanings of all this but uh, let's quickly uh, look at it so amphibious i know has to do with uh, water right i know this like from school i'm familiar with this term right so somebody who's able to live both uh, on, on land and water right an amphibious mammal like a crocodile for example right so uh, both land and water yeah ambiguous we know uh, which is not clear right something that is not clear so uh, that leaves me with ambivalent and ambidextrous what's the meaning of ambivalent ambivalent have you heard of that word so when somebody is ambivalent which means they are uncertain or they are unsure about something right indecisive these are all synonyms for ambivalent. So, when I am, you know, let's say there's an exam coming. I've already applied for SBAP. I'm not too sure if I need to do SSC CGL. So, I'm ambivalent about, uh, you know, applying for this exam or not, which means I'm uncertain. I'm unsure. I haven't, I'm not able to decide, right? But the context is someone able to use both hands with equal skill. Now, the word, if I remove the word ambi, right the prefix ambi dex the, the the root i would say right if i have to remove this prefix ambi and then if i remove this uh, you know uh, suffix common suffix r o u s o u s then i have the root uh, text right what can that mean if in case uh, you didn't know right that's also a, a latin root word in fact it means a right actually right it's a root term dext is a latin root and it means a right so i really can't make out anything from this right because the context that is here is saying someone able to use both hands with equal skill so all i know is hey ambi is both as a prefix meaning right and i have dextrous but i might be familiar with dextrous as a word right what is the meaning of dextrous dexterous i know which means skilled and especially with the hands right dexterous as an adjective the word dexterous as an adjective means some sort of a skill especially with 
hands. So that's my, so even if I break down the word, right, I still need to be familiar with certain things. So uh, for in case all of these words were completely new and you had no idea, right, one way to narrow it down is to quickly dissect the word, right, look at common prefixes, suffixes, if you are familiar with the root great, but even if I was familiar with the root text, it means right. Uh, I really can't figure out if that is the answer for someone who is able to use both hands in equal skill. Which means I should be familiar with the word dexterous as a word, right? And that's also not a very new and unfamiliar word. It's a very common word used in synonym and antonyms, right? Skilled and especially with hands and that's our answer. So this is something very basic. I mean, these are not difficult words, like I said, you know, ambiguous, amphibious and all is something that we know. But just in case you have to choose between ambivalent and ambidextrous and you have no idea about both those words, right? A little bit of knowledge on prefixes, suffixes and Latin root words might come handy. But otherwise also, recollecting other words that you're familiar with will also come handy. For example, dexterous, yeah? So, obviously the answer is four right so yeah most of you got that right let's let's just move on cure for all diseases uh, my options are curable uh, panacea incurable and curative what can i quickly <laughs> eliminate is i mean look at the options it's so funny right look at the uh, cure for all diseases we're talking about a term that means what is a cure for all this? So obviously it can't be curable. It can't be incurable. It can't be curative. What's curative by the by the by the way? Curable, I know, something that can be cured. Uh, incurable, something that cannot be cured. What is curable? I mean curative means again able to cure disease. Right? Just a, a objective form of the word. Cure. Right? So, able to cure disease. Obviously, that leaves us with pa panacea. Now, this, like, if, you, if I have options like this, it makes it very easy for me to uh, select uh, the answer, right? It makes it very easy for me to select the answer because all of the other options are so illogical. But, hope, hope that, you know, we can't hope that all of our options will be like this, you know, which will make it so easy for us to select uh, in the exam as well. So, panacea is nothing but a solution, right, we're talking about the cure for the diseases. So a solution or a remedy for disease is what panacea is. There you go. Let's move on. Influx. What is an influx? First of all, I don't know if you know that word. What's an influx? And in, so my prefix, I know it has to do with something coming in, flowing in, right? Influx is basically an inflow of water, either into a river, lake or sea. Or it can even be an entry, you know, of things or people, right? Influx, that's the meaning. And we're looking at, choose the word opposite in meaning to the given word as your answer. The first two were one word substitutions. This one is, I need an antonym. So, my options are reflex, deflection, effluent and exodus. Uh, what do you think are the, is the answer and maybe you don't know the meaning of a couple of words. So like I said, in the prefix tells me we are talking about something, some entry, some inflow, right? So what's the opposite of this? Exodus. Why so? What, what is the meaning of exodus? What is deflection? To deflect. Like to deflect is to change the direction of something right like if I'm, I'm walking straight and then I suddenly take a right I'm deflecting from the straight path that I was walking right to, to basically deviate so that's not the answer then I have effluent what's effluent effluent means you know this it's you should know this some sort of a uh, I would say sewage right outflow discharge emission that's effluent exodus what is exodus let's look at our options exodus means departure so influx is if influx is arrival 
Huh? Exodus is departure. X out. <laughs> okay, you're looking at the uh, prefix. Yeah? Okay, let's move on to the next one. And I don't want you to get confused with effluent as well. Right? Because effluent, we're talking about more of waste, sewage. You're getting, you're getting rid of it, right? It is an outflow, no problem. So I can say, hey, why not effluent is the opposite of influx? But influx is more on the lines of, you know, entry point of something or inflow of water, things like that, right? So the, the most effective antonym would be exodus and not effluent. Impeccable. So if I say something is impeccable, I know, like, you know, if I say, hey, Vidya, your presentation was impeccable. Right? When I say that, what I'm trying to say is it was like I couldn't find any fault in your presentation. It was so good. Everything was perfect. Right? From top to bottom, from start to finish, everything was so good. Right? So when I say something is impeccable, I'm saying I I just could not find any fault in the way you presented that or you in your presentation. Right? My options are faulty, tedious, flashy, boring. Again, we're looking for antonyms. So if you don't know the word impeccable there is a problem right so uh, again if even if I have to like uh, what do I say im as a prefix means uh, not or opposite of something right like impossible impenetrable immoderate uh, right I'm just giving you examples of this meaning of thing and if I remove the um, suffix able right so peck as a root word is that even a root word we don't know right and even if it is that's the uh, i know spec is a root word i don't know if peck pec is a root word i'm not too sure so i'm not even going to go there but good fortunately i know the meaning of this word impeccable so out of the options my uh, and we're looking for choose the word opposite in meaning so obviously it has to be faulty right option one uh, tedious, flashy, boring. Tedious is um, just too much work, right? Uh, this job is tedious, meaning I have so much work to do. Flashy, um, I only think of Ranveer Singh or Govinda or maybe even I am wearing a flashy uh, <laughs> top today. right now. Colourful. Boring, we know. Let's go. Zenith. What's the meaning of Zenith? Quickly. Zenith. See, either you know it or you don't know it, right? There's not much to dissect in this word as well. And we we'll, and we need an antonym here again. We're looking for an antonym for this word. Yeah, zenith means basically like a high point. So it cannot be climax because climax is a high point. Crisis, underrated word. Acme is an underrated word. So that leaves us with nadir. Uh, even if you don't know the word nadir, right? I'm sure the other three words you know. So it has to be nadir then. In fact, Nadir means lowest point, just the opposite of that. So, Nadir is the lowest point of something, right? Or or I can even say, you know, like an unsuccessful point. So, just to give you an example, see, um, just to put it in context, right, for you, I could say, it's like almost saying, you know, it's a, it was the worst moment of my career or of my life, right? The moment that there was least hope for me so maybe uh, you know the demotion in my career was the nadir of my career right uh, the fact that i got demoted instead of promoted was the nadir of my career which meaning that was my lowest point that was my that was a moment where i lost hope of growth in my career when i got demoted right just to give you an example Ah, okay, that's also a possibility where you can get confused with acne, but this is acme, right? Acme is nothing but, um, it, it's like, it's like the best possible thing, best possible thing uh, that can happen. So if you, if you get an opportunity to uh, present your presentation in front of the president of India, right, that can be an acme, something that you uh, were able to achieve yeah the best thing that ever happened to you yeah just to put it in context again in fact i would say that is that is a synonym of zenith 
in fact acme would be a synonym of zenith like it's the the highest point of achievement so for example if you have acme as the question and then nadir as one of the options and asking for an antonym you would still pick nadir because these two are opposites right so acme is the highest point of achievement got it yes yes it is the it is a synonym for zenith absolutely so another way uh, right when you're when you're learning uh, synonym antonym or one word substitutions also keep looking at the options and also register other synonyms and other antonyms because uh, you it will come handy you know suddenly what is the qu the question may not always be zenith you no know? it can be acme for example and then they are asking what is the opposite and then you have nadir as one of the options you you still know that hey nadir is the opposite of acme because acme is the synonym of zenith right so try and draw parallels when you are learning so you register other options as well just don't look at okay this is the question this is the answer that's it close let me forget about the other options no orderly we know uh what are my options semitic colic democratic chaotic so i'm guessing you don't know the meaning of semitic and colic but i can easily pick the antonym of orderly which is nothing but chaotic right democratic is a, is a, is a unrelated word here but what is the meaning of semitic just for our understanding right since we are on the process of expanding our vocabulary what is the meaning of semitic actually uh semitic is an adjective wh where you kind of associated with arabs and jews middle east yeah one of you mentioned that right these words are taken from that origin yes it is yeah uh, most of these words so anything to do with jews and arabs uh, you would associate this word to so basically it just i think it just relates to those people anything to do with them anything to do with their language is referred to as semitic yeah and what is the other option uh c o l i c colic i hope that's how it's pronounced i'm not too sure but something something um uh, you know i can relate to this word even though um, you know it's a, it's a new it's a new and unfamiliar word something to do with uh, there's another word no that uh, sounds like this which is related to sickness or pain basically colic means um you experiencing some continuous pain right it can be especially especially for babies yes that's what i wanted to say colic is a term associated with babies yeah so lower part of your stomach stomach uh, or in the bottom bottom part of your stomach anything related to your bowels right that's when you refer to it as colic so a lot of babies uh, go through this initially right because if they're not feeding properly at regular intervals or or they dehydrated they say you know the baby is colic yeah so semitic we know colic we know democratic we know obviously we know the answer but we're just expanding our vocabulary here uh chaos can uh, can mean a lot of things right chaos is basically disorder yes it is confusion only when there is uh, disorder where there is disorder there is confusion right if something is not planned properly or is not carried out in a in a in a in an orderly fashion then uh, there is disorder and because of that disorder confusion can arise as a result of that okay let's move on amalgamate here again we're looking for an antonym antonym amalgamate what is the meaning of amalgamate is this a new word or are you familiar with this word already amalgamate yeah if you are familiar with it you know amalgamate is to join or is to combine right merge yes amalgam amalgam of silver and platinum gold and copper okay yeah so uh, we want an antonym let's look at our options which is obviously it has to be separate right if amalgamate is to uh, to to join blah 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 to combine join combine which is right here synonym and then i have assimilate integrate all of these are kind of synonyms so that leaves us with separate as our answer easy one let's move on eulogy 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 so what's a uh, what's a eulogy 
basically it's a it's a it's a it's a poem okay and it's used for praise that's it so uh, uh, if you if you are if you are presenting a eulogy it's basically for someone who actually recently you know died or maybe somebody who retired from work and you want to praise their effort and uh, you know they it's like a dedication to them like it's like you dedicate a poem to them praising their work like for the time that they lived for the time that they worked in the company what were their achievements what did they accomplish what did we learn from them right so a eulogy is a poem you, uh, used especially to praise someone who either recently died or who retired from work right so having said that we looking at praise and and then we need a, a synonym for this best expresses the meaning we looking at a synonym and we obviously have our answer which is option 4 praise right so again you either know this or you don't know this not address or speech chaplusi in hindi okay tribute okay let's move on hyperbole 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 i know what a hyperbole is so let's i'll, I'll give you i'll give you some examples okay you tell me what hyperbole is i mean you may know the answer already but just you know i if i say you know i could sleep for a year that's an example of hyperbole obviously i can't sleep for a year right i'm exaggerating yeah so i'm just saying i'm so tired that i could actually sleep for a year that's hyperbole exaggeration right? something that's like too much huge yeah or i i you know i can say like my phone uh, weighs a ton not really i mean not exactly i'm just exaggerating right so something uh, it's like a deliberate exaggeration used for effect that's hyperbole overstatement what are my options and and we're looking for synonyms here right so obviously is it expansion is it imitation is it decoration is it exaggeration it's exaggeration that's what it is yeah so um a hyperbole uh, simile metaphor these are all literary terminologies but good to know because they are usually used by writers you know poets in their piece in their work in their art okay mammoth i know which has to do with something that is huge obviously and i need a synonym and i already have the answer not straight not wild not greedy but huge that's it very very easy one this is yeah but i'm sure you're also familiar with mammoths as such you know we watched a lot of movies we read a lot of stories which has all uh, you know mythical mystic creatures that are huge and yeah so mammoth falls in that category right something that is huge let's move on what's the next one menacingly menacingly somebody who's a menace is a threat right the word menace itself you know the synonym is so it's a menacingly means it's it's like a quality of uh, threatening right so if i if i say something like neeraj if you don't turn up tomorrow you have no idea what you're getting yourself into right that sentence has a little bit of menace in it meaning i'm threatening you like don't even think about not coming tomorrow because if you don't there are consequences that you need to uh, suffer right i'm using a menacing kind of a voice threatening kind of a voice right as though you will suffer the consequences of course it's an example yeah so obviously my i again i'm looking for a synonym dangerously threateningly harmfully hideously threateningly is our answer but what is the meaning of hideous hideous can mean um, something extremely bizarre crazy like outrageous right so i don't know if if i let my hair loose i might look hideous not really but you know what i'm saying right and 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 the wind is blowing everywhere and it's all over the place i might look crazy like a crazy woman so that's i mean just in case you didn't know the meaning of hideous everything else is easy dangerously harmfully we know the answer danger is different right a danger can be a threat but menacing is 
you know directly linked like if i have to choose between one and two i would choose two right because it's causing some sort of like there is a consequence to it so uh, that's why i gave you an example right so i can say sorry so i can say playing with fire is dangerous i can't say playing with fire is threatening doesn't make sense you understand the difference right playing with fire is dangerous it can cause you harm right but when i say menacing or threatening it's more like a uh, what can i say there are underlying shades to it in some context i can't use like for for the example the example that i gave playing with fire is dangerous is a good example i can't say playing with fire is uh, menacing not incorrect but though uh, in certain context they can overlap as synonyms because both of them uh, are more like a warning or or can cause harm so yes good point look look like after getting electric shock okay chalo let's continue so so that was the end of our synonym antonym kind of a thing we are going to move into uh, spot the error uh let's read as soon as we read it we know where the error is without no proof of your guilt the only course open to me is to dismiss the cause where is our answer are you guys giving me the answers yeah this is an easy one no like obviously look at the first one when i when i have without then i don't need no no again like redundant in meaning i have to change no to any the error is in a easy one let's move on as we see it she appears to be unreasonable anxious about pleasing her husband again while you reading it you know where the error is where is the error yeah right because we need uh, an adverb to modify how anxious was she unreasonably right uh, not unreasonable we don't need another adjective again we need a adverb modifying the adjective anxious so yes the error is in part b my elder brother is 6 foot what do i need to change ha huh. so speed why do you feel the need to change it to 6 feet i'm a, i'm assuming that you guys also are saying let's change foot to feet when do you use foot and when do you use feet why are you changing foot to feet here why why we usually say 6 feet tall okay so just to clarify this right yeah i i agree i agree with that uh, you know conversationally you know conversationally i can say you know hey my brother is 6 foot but in written form formal form it's better or it's technically or grammatically correct to say my brother is 6 feet why uh, obviously we are referring to both the both the legs right plural form so yeah feet is a plural form of foot no doubt about it but for you to understand the difference between feet and foot and in terms of usage right slight things that you need to keep in mind let me just put it down right yes we all know that feet is the plural form of foot no doubt about it right and you especially if you are referring to the lower parts of both your legs you have to use feet very true however what i'm trying to say is conversationally you will have people saying a hey, uh, you know whatever my uncle is uh five foot only okay which is acceptable but it is not so uh, in terms of grammar or written form just so you know so you don't have to go correcting people if they say you know so and so is 6 foot so and so is 5 foot conversationally it's accepted no problem yeah you, you you don't have to correct them immediately however when you are referring to both the parts of your legs then yes so for example i can say uh, i always uh, dip my feet in the swimming pool yeah i'm referring to both the legs yes it's obviously feet is also used for some sort of you know measurement in terms of height or length or depth so i can say the uh, the well is uh, what 50 feet 50 feet deep okay but in order for you to in terms of usage of foot also a couple of things that i want you to keep in mind is uh, when when you're using 
in terms of measurement right i gave you this example but when you're using it in terms of um uh, as an adjective for example i can say uh this is a 20 foot building or this is a a 6 foot pole so here i am using foot to describe the building or to describe the pole as an adjective so whenever you are using something as an adjective always use foot and not feet don't say uh, this is a 20 feet building incorrect okay just to give you the quick difference in terms of measurements uh, i can say uh, let's say okay i'll say shrikant climbed a a 20 foot tree okay the same thing i can say the tree shrikant climbed is 20 feet in height do you see the difference So basically, what's the difference between the first and the second sentence? Can somebody quickly tell me? Shrikant climbed a twenty-foot tree. The tree Shrikant climbed is twenty feet in height. What is the difference? Yeah, that's it. The first part, where it's acting like an adjective, I've used foot. Otherwise, for general measurement, I use feet. That's it. You just need to remember this. Okay, that's like the basic difference. And obviously, in our context, my elder brother is six feet, right? Because I'm referring to both his legs. Yeah. So let's move on. So you change foot to feet. This is where the error is. Let's go. The scissors is lying on the table. Why is that so? I'm sure. Yeah. Because scissors is a plural noun. Period. But uh, it can be used in a context as a singular when I say a pair of scissors. so i can say i took a pair of scissors and uh, cut my hair right but otherwise scissors is a plural it's just like uh, spectacles and trousers right these are all examples of the same trousers is a plural noun just like scissors so if i have to refer to it as a singular i will say a pair of trousers or a pair of scissors see for example just to give you uh, i will say there was a pair of trousers in his bag okay but the same thing i will say um his trousers were covered in mud do you see the difference just like the same example that i was given you there was so when i say a pair of trousers i use a singular verb but when i'm saying trousers which is generally a plural noun i use wear as a plural verb yeah and it's the same thing so spectacles goggles all of these fall under the same category yeah pair of socks whatever yeah you you get the idea right a pair of scissors is scissors are let's move on Ah, next one is a close passage one. Um, let's quickly skim this, right? Just skim the passage quickly so we know what words to quickly choose. So uh, let's go over the context. Okay, the great advantage of early rising is the good dash it gives us in our day's work. So here we're talking about uh, what is a clue? There is a clue phrase. A couple of you have come back and said option four, and I'm looking at it. Kick and rise are not very effective words given the context so if i have to choose between 2 and 4 there is a differentiator in the first sentence can somebody identify that clue phrase for me there is a clue phrase in the context in the first sentence which will help me identify that this has to be the answer what is that clue phrase now what is the clue phrase think look at your options i have 2 and i have 4 the clue phrase is days work which means we are talking about in a particular day in a particular day 
what is the advantage of early rising it gives a good start for my day no habit on the other hand early rising is a good habit no doubt but we are limiting the context to in a day's work yes our day's work is the differentiator for me to choose option 4 and not option 2 option 2 early rising is a good habit yes i agree no doubt but we are saying in our day's work matlab in a day if i get up early how is it advantages for me it gives me a good start for the day yeah that's why it's option 4 and not option 2 there is always i want you to pay attention to the context right close passage is all about the context there will always be clues in your context context move on let's move on second blank the early riser has done large amount of work dash other men have got out of bed options after before while as this is an easy one logically it has to be option the early riser has done large amount of work so if if you've got a good start for the day which means you start work earlier than the rest of them it has to be before hai na yes let's move on in the early morning the mind is fresh and there are few sounds or others dash actually it's not others it's other typo error options distractions attractions passions contraptions <laughs> funny options okay anyway what are what is our answer for blank 3 option 3 for the second one can't be while no there's nothing continuously happening they're saying before the other people get up this person has already finished work a lot of work obviously it has to be distractions right so in the early morning the mind is fresh and there are few sounds or other distractions so because there are not much distractions you are able to get a lot of work done before other men get out of bed yes easy one again fourth one so the work done at that time is generally dash what are my options quickly done well done smartly done secretly done obviously not secretly done where is the question of smartly done that's not the con- that's not what the context is uh, context is referring to right if i have to choose between 1 and 2 what will i choose i again i want you to fall back on context look at the previous sentence right it is saying mind is fresh no distractions what will be the most effective one if i have to choose between 1 and 2 see the context is not talking about you completing the task fast the context is always referring to the quality of your work being done right why because we are saying hey if i get up early i have a good start to my day my mind is fresh it's free of distractions i'm able to finish a lot of work before other men get up which means what will give me what will give me satisfaction more will it give me satisfaction that the, my work got done quickly or will it give me satisfaction that i did the work really well what will give me more satisfaction well done right if somebody comes and says i can do something quick but that doesn't necessarily mean that it is quality work right so the context is talking about that's why those two points in that context is saying if my mind is fresh and free of distractions yes i can do the work quickly no doubt but what is the more effective quality aspect from that work is it more to do with getting it done fast or is it more to do with the quality of the work that was done was good well done not quickly done right really well that is more uh, that gets more brownie points as compared to option 1 that's why you will lean towards option 2 and not option 1 right so when there are two options right when there are two options you need to focus on what is a more effective one given the context right there will be op- there will be options like this where you have to choose between the two and both might logically apply like i said quickly done is also okay in terms of gra- construction you're saying done well yeah i mean technically it should be like that but it's okay conversationally we say well done yes but a work done well is what we say as well both are acceptable so we don't have to debate about should we change well done to done well thankfully it's not spot the error but both are acceptable yeah moving on in many cases the early riser also finds time to dash some exercise in the fresh morning air options perform act do undergo so 
here you are just applying basic collocations. So, what's the basic collocation? What's the word that gets associated with exercise? Is it undergo? It's just do, right? Yeah, you do exercises. That's, that's your closest collocation. I do exercises, right? You get some exercises done. Moving on. And this exercise supplies him with a fund of energy. You don't really perform exercises. Somebody who said option one. Right? It's, a, it's not a performance per se. Exercise is something that you do to benefit self. Performance, on the other hand, is to entertain others. So, you would ideally say, did you finish your exercises? Yes, I finished my exercises. Right? You don't say, did you perform your exercises? Nobody will ask you that. I performed my exercise. We don't say that. Right? I did my exercise in the morning. So, we move on. So, this exercise supplies him with a fund of, uh, fund of energy that will last dash the evening. My options are for until buy in. The same thing. Whoever said perform yoga. This is an easy one. Yes, we are talking about time reference. Obviously, obviously, it has to be until. Option 2. Moving on. So, by beginning so early, he knows that he has plenty of time to do dash all the work. He has plenty of time to do happily all the work, leisurely all the work, thoroughly all the work, slowly all the work. What is the most logical answer here? So, by beginning so early, he knows that he has plenty of time to do. Huh. So, those of you who are saying leisurely, no, it will not apply. Can you tell me why? Can somebody explain to me why leisurely will not be appropriate in the context? Can somebody tell me why? Thoroughly is the answer, no doubt. But why can't it be leisurely? Can you look at the context and tell me why it can't be leisurely? There are some phrases in the context which will help you. Decide that it has to be 3 and not 2. So in the context it says he has plenty of time. If I have plenty of time to do something, right, my work will be thorough. I won't be doing it in a hurry. Right? If I have plenty of time to do a particular job, it will be complete, it will be thorough. I will not do it leisurely. Right? That's like a, that's like saying, okay, I have the whole day, uh, so I will prepare for this particular session, I'll take the whole day. Right? That doesn't make logical sense, no? That's not the way people operate. That shouldn't be the way you, you operate. Right? If you have enough or considerable time to complete a work, which means you should do a thorough job of it. Yeah, yeah. Plenty of time is your answer, is your clue. In fact, just because you have plenty of time, see, plenty of time is equivalent to leisurely. See, leisurely, on the other hand, gives me a, 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 a meaning. What is the meaning of leisurely? Relaxed. Right? Correct? Yes or no? I'm, I'm putting the context back to you. So, just because I have plenty of time, not, not that, you know, I'm going to relax and take it easy. The plenty of time, keeping in mind the context. So, it says, by beginning so early, he knows that he has plenty of time to do all the work. So, work still has to get done. Right? And it's like saying, remember the previous context also we said, if I have to choose between quickly done and well done, what will I choose? I will choose well done, right? That is the most effective point in that blank. Likewise, in this blank, if I have to choose between leisurely and thoroughly, I will choose thoroughly. Because the, the, the focus is more to do with completing the job in a thorough fashion. Slowly again doesn't bring in the effectiveness that the context is trying to express, no? See, let me put it this way. If I have plenty of time and if I end up doing the work slowly, one, I may not even finish the work because I'm doing it so slow that, you know, even if I have plenty of time and the, the factor is or the focus is not that uh, the work is getting done fast or the work is getting done slow or I'm relaxed about the work that is given to me. It is about getting the work done well. And it is about getting the work done completely or thoroughly. Completely. Yes. Yeah. 
and all the work is another clue for you which means i still have work to do i can't be slow and i can't be relaxed i still have to complete the work thoroughly right he can be moving on so plenty of time to do thoroughly all the work he can be dashed to do paid to do deemed to do forced to do expected to do what's the answer for the seventh plank by beginning so early he knows he knows that he has plenty of time to do thoroughly all the work he can be expected to this is the obvious one right there is an expectation that boss the work that you do has to be quality work and it has to be complete work and is not tempted to what are my options run hurry worry ponder over any part of it so this entire context will actually help you figure out the blanks for 6 7 and 9 it's all interrelated so if i end up doing the work leisurely and slowly i might have to end up doing it in a hurry because i may not have time to complete all the work you know i start ponder means to think and is not tempted to see there is a possibility of him being tempted to hurry over the work if he does the work slowly or leisurely right so for example i get up early okay and i start my work i know i have time till the evening so i relax and i do my work slowly but then what happens at the end like after a couple of hours i have realized that i'm actually running out of time i don't have enough time to actually complete all the work that i am expected to do so i be, i you know get into a hurry mode towards the end of the day right that there is a possibility of that so keep looking at the context and then it will also help you figure out the options for the previous blanks so in this one not run over hurry over okay any part of it all his work being finished in good time he has a long dash of rest in the evening my options are epoch cycle moment and interval what's what's epoch e p o c h have you heard of that word before or is it a new word for you guys epoch means it's actually it's almost like like the beginning of a period in you know someone's life or a beginning of something you, you can refer to as you know like a a specific period in somebody's life or the beginning you know like history so it's not really the right word given the context right he has a long i can immediately eliminate this if i know the meaning obviously long cycle of rest long moment of it cannot be long moment no out cycle and interval what will you choose yes he has a long interval of rest in the evening before the timely hour when he goes to bed ho gaya right so that brings us to the end of our session that was pretty simple so 10 uh, so i'm i'm just i was just looking at your different options that you all had even for the close passage this is a relatively uh, very easy close passage right if you ask me except for two or three blanks you guys were like two or three options you couldn't figure it out but uh, that's why it's important to read the entire context in its whole so it will help you uh, figure out where the focus is and which words or options should i choose for effective meaning yeah chalo yeah bye take care i will see you guys tomorrow at 11 o'clock